Hello everyone, welcome to Lisa's Estate Studio. We had some technical problems here. I apologize for the delay. It looked like it went live when it was supposed to have been scheduled and I apologize for that. YouTube often has updates and when they do, sometimes we don't get notification of them right away. So I'm gonna give you a second to catch up with me. I'm gonna reach over for my iPad Hi, Jan. Hi, Carol. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I've not had that happen before. Reaching for my iPad. Welcome, everyone. I just want to make sure that um, I'm going to be able to see your comments. So I got to find my application now. Gosh, I'm sorry, guys. Welcome. Do me a favor, if you would, chime in and tell me where you're from. It's always fun to see where everybody is from. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I am excited about tonight's A Fun Fold card. Um, it's really something different and it can be manipulated for different measurements. I'm trying to get to my channel so I can see your comments when I flip the phone down. Okay, well, I'm trying to find you. I think there you are. Okay, I'm, I'm there now. Thanks for your patience, everyone. I want to introduce you to Megan. Megan Justice is my virtual YouTube live assistant. You'll see a wrench next to her name. She'll catch things that I miss during the live, especially when I turn the table down until um, I turn the phone down to the stamp table because I'll be busy stamping and sometimes I can't get to all your questions. But I'm glad that you've joined us. Interact with each other, ask questions. Megan will try to catch what she can. I'll try to catch what I can as well. Fun fold tonight and I think we ought to get started. What'd you guys say? So here we go. We're going to turn you down. And if you'll give me just a second here, I want to make sure that I get my phone zoomed in so you guys can see. I don't think I have my my uh, chamois wet here. So let me squirt that and get that wet. Kind of liven that up a little bit. We're going to start with some scoring. I want to make sure I'm within your camera um, range. And I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Now I'm going to mention this later, but tonight's project is going to be on my blog on Wednesday. When we're done with the live, you're going to be able to find the link for that blog post down in the description of this video below. Just give me a little bit of time to get all that up for you. In that blog post, you're going to find all the cutting and scoring dimensions for tonight's project. That'll make it easy for you to recreate it. Now, if you're here visiting and you are live, you're going to need to make sure that you're signed in to YouTube to be able to enable the chat. So I'm glad you guys are here. There's lots of you. It's wonderful to see you from all over the U.S. And I also see Canada and I see England. Welcome. I'm using the Stampin' Trimmer. The Stampin' Trimmer has two blades. There's a light blade that's for scoring and there's a dark blade that is for cutting. I'm going to be using the scoring blade tonight. And I'm going to do my first score line at three and one half inches. The reason I absolutely love this is I can't do anything straight. So this little bar across the top allows my cardstock to rest, to rest right along that edge. So here I am at three and a half. I'm going to close the arm and that light blade is going to score and I'm going to just press right through there. Now I need to do the next score mark all the way at nine inches. But guess what? This is the beauty of the Stampin' Trimmer. There's an extended arm. And on the back side, there's a little leg here, so I can click that down. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna ensure that this doesn't go flopping, it doesn't sag. So I'm gonna slide this over to the nine inch mark now, and I'm gonna score there as well. That is it for the cutting and scoring. Super easy for tonight's card. You're gonna see, once I start to fold this up, let me grab my bone folder. I've got one here at the bottom, and then I've got, here's the top half. I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna manipulate this just a little bit. You know, I don't care how per, um, precise we are with our score lines. Sometimes you've kinda of gotta jerry rig your card a little bit. So I'm making sure that my two ends here are coming together and then I'm gonna use my bone folder again to score. So this is gonna be the base of my card. Do you see how the card opens top and bottom? I'm gonna give you some suggestions. It could also go this way. It could also go this way. It could also go this way. Here's the other thing that's really fun for you to know is you can manipulate those score lines so that the opening 
is a little bit further in either direction. So have some fun with this fun fold to allow you to try to experiment some different layouts. I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna do some stamping on some scratch um, cardstock that I've got pre-cut here. This is Smoky Slate and I'm bringing in my Smoky Slate ink pad and I'm gonna be using the stamp set tonight that's called P.S. You're the Best. I think that this is a sleeper stamp set. I wanna turn on that extra light, hoping you guys got a little bit more light there. It's in the annual catalog and I think it's well overlooked. I love everything that's vintage, I really do. And this typewriter kind of grabbed my heart and I love the fonts and the different greetings that are here because I think you can make a, just a huge variety of cards. So let's get started with that one. And I've put together some images from that stamp set. Everything I'm using is from that exact same stamp set. If it's gonna be different, I'll make sure that I tell you. And I'm gonna be doing what I'm calling messy stamping. I'm gonna move you in just a little bit closer so that you can see. I'm gonna make sure I slide over to give you enough room. And I'm gonna bring in a small piece of scratch paper here because I'm gonna be doing some stamping off. I wanna make sure that the images are not too dark because I'm creating a background. So again, I'm calling this messy stamping. That's just a Lisa thing. So I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna stamp off. And then I'm gonna stamp here and here and I'm gonna repeat. And I'm just gonna kind of fill this with a little bit of a background. I am looking to make sure that I've got light and dark areas. There's absolutely no science to this whatsoever. You can't even mess it up. As a matter of fact, that's what we're doing. We're trying to mess it up. We're doing some messy stamping. So I've got this off camera. My chamois is here. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that. I'm an advocate of cleaning my stamps as soon as I use them because I'll tell you what, if I don't, I, leave, I lose track of where I was and I get them in another color and I've got a hot mess. So it's just a good practice if you're a stamper. Same stamp set. We've got a cute little jumbled alphabet here background and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna stamp off and then I'm gonna do some messy stamping. So we're gonna call this the messy stamping technique. And it doesn't matter if you stamp off once or twice, you just keep going. We're just trying to create some textured background, some interest for this background of this piece of cardstock. So again, back off on my chamois and I'm gonna set that aside for right now. And I'm gonna close that up because we're gonna use it in a different way in just a minute. I'm gonna mount this on a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. I'm gonna add my snail adhesive to the back and I'm working around my four corners. And I've got my cherry cobbler cut here. Again, remember all these cutting dimensions are gonna be in the description of this video below. There'll be a link and it's gonna be on my blog for Wednesday. There will be pictures and cutting dimensions and scoring dimensions, everything there for you. All right, so we've got that little panel. I'm gonna set that aside. And I've got another piece here of cherry cobbler. And I've pulled out the cherry cobbler ink pad. And from that exact same stamp set, I've mounted the PS. Isn't that cute? I just love that. Oftentimes we don't think about using words or greetings or punctuation as a way to make backgrounds on our cards. But you know what? This is a great tip for those of you that are not brand, uh, that don't have a whole lot of supplies or maybe are brand new stampers. Go ahead and pull out the words that you're even gonna use on the card and vary those just across the background to give yourself just some interesting background kind of surface papers. This kind of reminiscent of designer series paper even though that it's not but it gives you a little bit of texture and it's kind of a fun way to cheat. If you don't have the same color ink pad as you have cardstock, consider Versamark. Versamark is a um, watermark ink pad. One purchase and you'll always get tone on tone. It's really lots of fun to use. All right, so I'm gonna slide this over to the side because we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. And the next step here is a piece of scrap Whisper White cardstock. And here is that typewriter. You're gonna see how large this typewriter is. Just to give you an idea, this is my hand. It's a, it's a good size image. I had trouble getting a good crisp impression from this stamp. And I think the reason is, is because it's open here, which is where we're gonna add some stamped um, greetings. So I think it's a little off-centered when I pushed. So I found a remedy 
and that is this. I know you probably can't even tell what it is. This is the Pierce mat. I wrapped it in grid paper, which is what I'm using here, just to kind of keep it clean because you know sometimes if I'm getting overzealous, I'll get ink on my little Pierce mat and then of course it doesn't dry and it smears and I've got a big mess. So I wrap it in grid paper and I'm gonna put my cardstock right on top of that. And for this, because we're gonna add a little bit of color, I'm gonna use the Jet Black Stays On ink. So let me take the lid off of that. And I've got my stamp here. And because my stamp is larger than my ink pad, do you see that? I'm gonna ink it face up on my work surface. This is a great tip for you. Oftentimes I see people trying to maneuver the stamp over a smaller pad than the stamp is size-wise. And it's really frustrating because it's easy to miss a place. So I'm just gonna tap and I'm gonna travel. One thing about stays on, don't be afraid to give it a little bit of a twist to cover it. This is a solvent-based ink, which means it's gonna withstand water coloring, whether it's a blender pen or an aqua painter. And take your time and make sure you get good coverage. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do lots of firm, even pressure. It's really important that you trace out the design. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm in a hurry stamping or I'm not you know, excited to try to manipulate my idea, I don't necessarily stamp the image clear. So there we go. You can see that that pierce mat has really allowed me to get um, a good adhesion of that stamped image on my cardstock. Stays on ink. Very important that you clean your stamp right away. Because this ink is different than the Memento ink, which is a dye-based water ink, this solvent-based ink can leave a stain and kind of a tacky residue on your stamps. Again, my chamois is right off camera, so I hate to reach in front of you, but I gotta clean that off, so I'm gonna set that over there. And I'm gonna go back now to the Cherry Cobbler ink pad, and I'm gonna add a greeting inside of here. I'm gonna bring back that PS, so we can add a little credence to that background that we just stamped. And I'm gonna stamp that first. So I'm gonna tap that here on my ink pad and I'm gonna stamp that here at the top. So we've got PS and now I've got you're the best. So this might be a great card for a teacher, maybe who's helped a child with some homework. Maybe this is for a tutor, a bus driver, a cafeteria person. How about a coworker that um, helped get your back on a tight situation at work? Just an awesome greeting for a thank you card. The next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna add a little bit of color to this, but keeping with the whole theme of vintage, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't real pretty. I wanted it to be messy coloring as well. And you're all gonna love this because if you tell me I cannot color, I'm not good at coloring, this card is for you. It's gonna be super easy to do. So I've got my Smoky Slate ink pad here. This is the brand new classic ink pad case that Stampin' Up! just designed in June of this year. And they're shallower than the old cases. The old cases I found really easy to squeeze from the back and get residual ink inside the lid. These, not so much. Because they're shallower, and of course because they're new, I find that the case is really kind of hard to squeeze. So you're gonna wanna concentrate in the center and you're gonna wanna push. I'm gonna give you a tip, this is a Lisa tip, and if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But I gently take my fist, or a couple knuckles rather, and I give it a push right in the center. I'm not pushing to the point you're gonna break the case, okay? All I'm doing is I'm pressing so that the ink pad will push itself against the lid. And see what happens? It puts residual ink in here. Whenever you're gonna be doing water coloring, it's important that you work with the ink from here, not from here. A blender pen has a chemical in it that will actually pick up the pigmentation from your ink pad. Yeah, it'll actually leave kind of like a, a mist spot. It'll look, the pigmentation will look lighter. So you don't wanna put that there. You wanna pick it up from here. So this is like your palette. If you have the ink refill, you can certainly put a drop there. Literally, a drop is all you need because it's very concentrated. You can see too that they're a little wobbly, a little uneven. So here's another tip. I take my other ink pad. I'm gonna stick that right up underneath there to kind of keep it from wobbling. I think you guys can see that. And I'm gonna bring in my aqua painter because we are gonna be doing some messy coloring to kind of go along with that messy background. Oftentimes people think that their coloring has to be perfect. It absolutely does not especially when you're working with vintage type cards. You're not looking for perfection, you're looking for just a little bit of coverage. Now the Aqua Painters come in a two pack and you can buy these in my online store. 
they unscrew. I'm just going to show you here and you're going to fill it with tap water. Nothing fancy. And then you're going to screw this back on. Make sure it's on tight. Boy, have I learned the hard way. The cap is going to come off and then I like to pinch the bristles to make sure that my aqua painter is not soaking wet because if it's soaking wet, you've got a hot mess just waiting to happen. I want to be able to control where the water is going to go. This is Whisper White cardstock. It is not watercolor paper. Keep in mind that if you oversaturate this with color, what's going to happen is the paper is going to pill, which means it's going to look bumpy and uneven and kind of worn. But guess what? We're after a vintage card, so that's actually a good thing. So I'm not gonna do it on purpose, but I'm gonna give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna pinch that one more time. I've got a lot of water in here today. I'm picking up a little color from here and you're gonna see that I'm gonna move that color to a clean spot here in my palette. The reason I'm doing that is I wanna make sure that it's not too concentrated from the ink pad and I'm able to control it. So I'm gonna put a little color here and remember because we used stays on ink, we don't have to worry about it running. And look, I am just, swishing color in here. There's absolutely no need to be an artist for this project whatsoever. Aqua painters are really fun for washed aged look backgrounds. They also make a great splattering tool. I've recently um, just done a video on that. If you guys haven't seen it, you can head over in my YouTube channel here. You'll be able to find it. And then over the keys, I'm just going to swipe. I really want there to be some white from behind and I know that I'm watered down that ink pool a little bit more, so I think it's gonna come out fine. I'm gonna go back over that space bar just a little bit to add a little bit more color so that it's darker than the rest. This is where the paper is gonna to begin to pill, and that is exactly what I'm looking for on a vintage card. If you are using your aqua painter to do precise water coloring, you're gonna to wanna to use watercolor paper or shimmery white cardstock. Both are more resistant to the water and will hold up better and your image will be nice and crisp. So keep that in mind, that is just for tonight's technique. I'm actually gonna hold this over my chamois and just cause of space, I'm gonna do it off camera and I'm gonna squeeze this gently and water is gonna run through the bristles of my aqua painter, which is gonna allow me to rinse the tip. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna pinch it again. If you're using a very dark color like Pacific Point for an example, you may have to squeeze it a little bit more over your chamois or your stamp and scrub to get it to run through and run clear. Always check it to make sure the pigmentation is gone and I like to make sure all those little brush hairs are put together before I put my cap on. That's a tip for you because boy I'll tell you what there's nothing worse than those little stray hairs coming out the bottom and when you're trying to aqua paint or color in you've got ink in places you don't want it. If you happen to have a huge pool of water here and it's, you're concerned about, of course, getting a large amount of that in your ink pad, go ahead and take a rag or a paper towel and clean this out. You can see mine is not running, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. This is gonna need to sit and dry for a few minutes because remember I told you this is not watercolor paper. So just ahead of the video, look, I did another one. This one's good and dry. I'm gonna set this one aside. And guess what? There is no framelit for this. I know, boo hiss, but I'm gonna cut it with you because I wanna show you that this is not difficult. You are going to leave a little bit of white cardstock around these elements here on the typewriter. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna be moving my hand and my cardstock to make it easy for me. And any of those little splash marks is what those little lines are there, that's what I'm calling them. I'm just cutting them away if they're in my way. You can leave a little bit of white around here so that you don't distort the image. In addition to that, it's actually gonna make your image look just a hair bigger. And this way you don't have to worry about cutting right on the color line. I, I love to fussy cut, that, that's a true statement. I'm one of those people that finds this very therapeutic, but I realize that most people don't. As paper crafters, we cannot get around cutting. That's for sure, that happens, it's part of what we do. But here it is all finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those scraps and set those aside. I'm gonna move this and let's go ahead and get this card put together. Oh, you know what, before we do that, I'm gonna go back over here and look what I've done. I've cut a couple pieces I'm gonna put on the inside as well. So I figure while I've got my stamps out, we might as well do that. I'm gonna go back to my cherry cobbler 
and I've pulled out the words thank you. Now this script is not part of this stamp set, but you can see there's lots of fun things that are. I wanted to make my card specifically thank you. So I'm using a two piece stamp set that's called Another Wonderful Year. Oh, probably one of my favorite greeting stamp sets in the annual catalog because it covers just about everything. Again, you'll be able to find that in my online store. So I've got the thank you here. I'm gonna tap that up in my cherry cobbler and I'm gonna look to make sure I'm not been too overzealous but getting ink all around the outside. And I'm gonna stamp that here near the top. And then I've got my chamois off camera again. And I'm gonna close this up. And I'm gonna add a little bit more to this, just kinda of jazz this up because I can. I've got that smoky slate again. And I've got my little alphabet here background. I'm gonna ink that up and I'm gonna stamp that right here at the bottom of that layer. And again, my chamois. You know, I had a couple people the last time I was live with you a few weeks ago ask me, why do you stamp off on your scratch paper before you clean it on your chamois or your stamp and scrub? I do a ton of stamping, uh, probably four or five cards almost every single day, if not more. I find that I'm able to keep my chamois and my stamp and scrub cleaner longer if I stamp off some of that excess ink, get that pigmentation off on my scratch paper before taking it to my chamois and my stamp and scrub. That's gonna keep it a little bit cleaner, a little bit longer, which means I have to make less trips to the sink to rinse it out if I'm doing a lot of stamping or I'm stamping with friends. That's just another tip for you. I don't know about you, but once I'm you know, in my little mojo thing here and I'm creating, I don't like to walk away. All right, so I've got that layer here. And let's go ahead and let's put this card together. Make sure you stay with me to the end. I've got another card using these products that I wanna share with you. So we've got our top panel here that we did. That's gonna go here at the top. So I'm gonna slide that over. It looks like I had a little water on there from my aqua painter, but good news is it didn't go through. And then we're gonna add that adhesive around that perimeter. And I'm gonna open this up. And I know it's white on white, so I'm gonna add my um, silicone craft sheet here underneath so that you can see just a little bit better. This is a very tight margin. I made sure that this was just about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I'm looking to create a small border of color. So there we go. And then I'm gonna put that small panel with the PS that we did, and that's gonna go down here at the bottom. I see lots of comments and I bet Megan is really busy. Thank you, Megan. I'll come back and check those in just a few minutes. And I'll put that panel here as well. I see that Kathy has asked a question. I thought you should only put water in the aqua painter. Actually, I've had people tell me that they've actually used their old aqua painters to hold bleach for bleaching technique. And then here is this image for the inside. So let's go ahead and flip that over as well. I must have splashed water on my on my table and I didn't even know it because that looks like that's what that is. Grateful it's on the back, huh? And then this is gonna go on the inside. Whoop, let's not put it upside down. That would not be good. Boy, I've done that before. Anybody else? And then again, that small margin of color. Now here's that typewriter. Keep in mind, because this is a fun fold, I'm gonna show you from the side. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't adhere this in a place that you seal the card shut. I've done that. So I'm gonna put mine down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna add dimensionals to the bottom half of my typewriter, and I've got those here. Dimensionals are double-sided pieces of pre-cut foam tape, so we don't have to mess up our scissors. Isn't that wonderful? And I'm gonna use them in the four corners. I'm gonna put one in the center. There's nothing worse than you mail a handmade card, and when it goes through that postage meter at the post office, it comes out all saggy on the other side. I'm removing the paper backing from these, and if you're having trouble, Take your fingernail and press it in the center of the dimensional. That helps to lift the outside edges, making it easier for you to take those off. And here I am gonna go right here in the center of that card. I wanna make Do you know me, it's not done because why? It doesn't have bling. So I'm just gonna add this here to kind of hold my card closed so I can work with it. Before you join me, I pulled out a couple sequins here. These are from the metallic sequin assortment. And I'm gonna attach mine tonight with glue dots. Now I'm gonna talk to you about a couple other products that are outside of this because while we're here, I'd like to show you as much as I can. 
These glue dots are all part of Paper Pumpkin. Now, if you're not subscribed to Paper Pumpkin, it is a monthly craft kit that comes to your home. This is the one I just got day before yesterday. Every month it's a surprise. We never know what we're getting, but this month, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm in love every month with what I get. First of all, when you get your kit, it's got beautiful tissue paper in it. Of course, mine doesn't anymore because I've used it. You're gonna get a photopolymer stamp set every single month. I've used mine, so it's in a Ziploc bag. You're gonna get another new color of Stampin' Spot. So this is just like your ink pad, but it's a lot smaller. This one inch by one inch ink pad is exactly made the same way. It is refillable, so you don't have to worry about it running out. Works fantastic on your stamp positioner, stamp apparatus. And the great thing is you can take these with you. If you go camping or you're going to school to stamp with kids or with friends, a lot easier to haul all of these than all of these. Paper pumpkin kit includes everything pre-cut and ready to go. I'm looking to see where I'm putting this before I lay it down. This month's kit was absolutely beautiful. Um, the printed cards, all I did was add the vellum from the kit. There's no instructions, there's just pictures. I know we can all follow those. And I want to show you, look at those beautiful foil edged um, envelopes that came with the kit. You get everything. You don't even need adhesive. You're gonna need a pair of scissors and maybe an hour, hour and a half worth of time. There's no prep involved. The best price, are you ready, is the price, $19.95. That includes the shipping, so there's no additional fee. You will have to pay your local sales tax. There's no way we can get around that, but it comes right in your mailbox. You can subscribe monthly. You can also subscribe for a longer period of time, but I recommend monthly because of the shipping, um, how the shipping is calculated. So that's Paper Pumpkin. And these glue dots come in that Paper Pumpkin kit. And let me tell you why I hoard these. These are slick when you are using sequence. If you have difficulty getting a tiny, tiny dollop of glue where you want a sequin and you find it challenging, this is gonna revolutionize it for you. So let me show you how it's gonna work. And it's gonna work with this brand new tool. Now you haven't seen this yet, unless you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but this is the brand new Take Your Pick pickup tool. Unlike other pickup tools on the market, you're absolutely gonna love this one. There's a little cap that goes here as well, so let me show you how it comes. You're gonna get the pickup tool. The cap comes off. You don't wanna twist the cap because that's gonna dispense the little putty that's here. That's gonna help us pick up these little tiny pieces. Look at that. Is that just not making your life a whole lot easier? It sure is. The other thing is, is you can interchange these tips. Also inside that package, you're gonna get a refill. So this unscrews and you put the new one in, that's all included. And you can change out the end here with a double pointed stylus tool. So let me show you how it works. I'm hoping you can pick this up on the camera, but there is a lock and an unlock picture here. It's clearly marked. All you have to do is turn it down to the unlock. This comes out, but look at, there's more tools. Here's a little spatula. You wanna know why I absolutely love this thing? Because how many times have I put my adhesive in the wrong place or my dimensionals and I need to try to pull it up? This kind of gets up underneath there and lifts them. So you're gonna to wanna to lock that back in place by just turning it and that'll lock your device. And again, if you wanna take it out and you wanna put in the stylus tool, no problem. Just line it up and then turn it and it's locked in. And there's a cap for both the putty end and there's a cap for this interchangeable end. I'm absolutely loving this, but you ready? $10, oh my gosh, US price is $10. The refill, like I said, one comes with it, but you can get a two pack of refills for $3.50. Not only is the Stampin' Up! price better than anything that's on the market, the tool is better than what's on the market. You guys are gonna love this. It is coming in the brand new holiday catalog. The holiday catalog is debuting on September 5th. If you're a current customer of mine and you have spent $50 or more in the last six months, you should be getting this in your mailbox anytime now. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in Stampin' Up! products, I would be more than happy to send you a complimentary copy. Just leave me a comment below and we'll get a hold of you. If you don't have a demonstrator, and you're also interested in the annual catalog, I can send you that as well. So just let me know when we talk um, which one you need or if you need both. 
So let's use this little guy and let's put him into action. I'm going to put some sequins on this card. So I'm going to kind of put my hand over it so I can manipulate what I'm doing here. I'm going to have to change this out again. So I'm going to loosen that up. I'm going to ditch that stylus tool and I'm putting in my little pick-me-up tool because that little pointy end is going to help me pick up these flat glue dots and put them on my card. The paper pumpkin glue dots are flat. If you try to do this with the one on the roll, you will always distort the image. I have tried for years and have not been successful, which is one reason why I hoard these things. I absolutely love them. So I'm gonna take one more. I like odd numbers, and I'm gonna put one more down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of press that paper down inside, and I'm gonna lift up the adhesive. I'm sorry, I'm gonna lift up the paper backing to reveal this little sticky glue dot on the other side. So I'm just gonna get those all ready, and then I'm gonna use my Take My Pick tool. Let me get that one off there. I told you those little glue dots are sticky. And then I'm gonna pick up my sequence. So I've got a large sequin here. Look, I didn't have to use my fingers. Is this not the best thing since sliced bread? I'm telling you what, love that. So I've got one there, and I've got another here because I don't know, I've got small fingers. I can't even get in there and, and use these. I have a hard time getting those stuck down. And then there is another one here. There we go. And then we're gonna put that one down here on top of that glue dot. So there we go. I can cover this now, that little pierce, oh, wrong end. That piercing tool is a wonderful thing, especially for storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside. So this is the card that we created today. Today's a fun fold vintage card. But I told you I had another card to share with you. So let me share that with you now. That is using the exact same stamp set. This is the stamp set that's called PS You're the Best, if you missed it in the beginning. Fun vintage set with lots of different greetings, everything from birthday to friend, miss you, thank you, love you. And here I've used it in different fashion. I've used gray granite cardstock here and ink. That little heart is right here in that stamp set used an embossing folder for some texture, and I cut it out just like I did on the fun fold that we created together tonight. Which one do you like better? I don't know, the fun fold is kind of always hard to top because it's so versatile. And remember, like I said earlier, if you're just joining us, this could go this way, it could go this way, and you can attach whatever image or element you want either to the top half or the bottom half of your card. So there's lots of versatility here. If you haven't given this stamp set a look, I would encourage you to do so. I've had so much fun with this. Now let me flip the camera around. That'll give me a chance to actually see your comments. Oh, you guys are chiming in. You like them both. Oh, I'm glad. Oh, that makes me feel good. Um, I love giving you ideas on what you can do with a stamp set besides just one card because there's, gosh, you could just go crazy with the ideas. It's lots and lots of fun. Um, I'm looking here. And I just want to go over a couple things. Again, if you don't have a demonstrator and you're interested in the current um, annual catalog, which is this big, beautiful book right here full of samples and amazing products, or the upcoming holiday catalog. This is coming out September 5th. I cannot open the pages for you yet, but I've got good news for you. Are you ready? I'm going to be back live with you on the day that this debuts. That is Wednesday, September 5th, right here on YouTube. I am gonna go through the holiday catalog products that I have, and I'm gonna show you the designer papers in person. I'm gonna show you the ribbons, you're gonna see the clips, the stamp sets, the embossing folders. I don't know about you, but when I go shopping, I like to actually kind of see it outside of just a catalog sometimes to see if it looks like it really looks. Because I know sometimes the designer series papers in the catalog, you don't get a really good look at them because they're picture kind of small. But when you're here with me on September 5th, we're gonna go over all that together and I'll give you lots of information about the products so that you can make wise um, choices when you're placing your purchases for the holidays. This holiday catalog, I have to tell you, is probably one of my absolute favorites. There is something in here for everyone and every budget. And yes, there are kits. So I'm excited to share those with you. I will be back with you on Wednesday, September 5th. If you have enjoyed tonight's YouTube live event, whether you're watching it live or with the replay, would you do me a favor? Give me a like, which is a thumbs up and share it. Share it with your crafting friends, social media, Pinterest, 
um, of course, Instagram, Facebook, share it and leave me a comment. Megan and I read every single comment that is here. We'll either heart it so you know that we've liked it and read it, or we'll reply back if you've had a question. So please know that we love to interact with you. That's just all part of the fun. I'm looking to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, oh, finally, I'll put the link down below, but head over to my blog. I provide a free week e-newsletter. Boy, that's a mouthful. A free weekly e-newsletter. Inside that newsletter, I provide a tutorial for a project that I don't share on any of my other platforms. It is completely free. You can head over to my blog at lisastampstudio.com. You're going to scroll down to where it reads, want more ideas, and then you can just click. It says subscribe, but it's completely free, and we would love to have you join us. I'm reading all the comments that are coming through, and I'm so glad that you guys have enjoyed tonight's demonstration. I look forward to being back with you on Wednesday, September 5th, right here on YouTube to go over those holiday catalog products. It's going to be a great night of show and tell. You're not going to want to miss it. You guys, thanks so much for being here. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.